Hello and welcome to another haul video. I did not expect that I'd have such a big haul so soon after the previous one, but you know, when sales hit, you've got to take advantage or at least I take advantage. It could be a little bit of an addiction. I guess I'll find out in a few years, but I really can't foresee myself spending the way I have been for over the next few months. So I think this is probably the finale for a while, but we'll see. I could be lying to you and lying to myself, but it's like something overcomes me and I just need to have all the things. So whenever I have any type of like voucher available, whenever like a bonus is coming from work, it's like all, what can I buy rather than what can I save, which is totally not the right way to do things so do not listen to me for any financial advice um but if you enjoy frivolous skincare that's what i'm all about also i kind of consider this a way of like therapy not to sound like stupid but when you're having a bad day a little treat for yourself i think is the best way to solve most problems especially if they're like fleeting so, and I just really believe like genuinely in finding happiness in the small things. So just like little things throughout the day make a world of a difference in terms of overall um, like well-being. And it's probably not good to attach to material things, but honestly, people can be just as shitty. So you might as well get enjoyment out of inanimate objects if you can. This was a super long intro for absolutely no reason. Um, and as always, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. I'm going to try not to go into too much detail because I don't have much experience with these products at all. A few of them I have opened because I tend to wait a few weeks to film a haul like this rather than as I go. So yeah, let me know if you have any questions or feedback and I'll get straight into it finally. <laughs> I'll actually start with a French brand called Mimtique. I'm pretty sure this is fairly new. They might've come out last year. They're inspired by French pharmacy, but do lean a little bit luxury. Um, I bought their cleansing balm, face cream, and also a face serum. And they just sound like a really interesting brand all about mimicking the natural components in your skin. I actually have a dedicated video to the brand coming up pretty soon. So that's all I'll say about Mimtique for now, but stay tuned for that. Next up, I just have a backup purchase or like replenishment of a brand that I absolutely adore and it's Build Skincare. So I picked up a backup of Bee Wash, I've got Bee Cream and also Bee Balm and I love all three of these products. They pretty much form the entire like backbone, backbone of my skincare routine. So I'll never be without these products. Bee Cream is pretty much my favorite moisturizer of all time. Bee Wash is pretty much my favorite cleanser <laughs> of all time. And Bee Balm I use on top of retinoids anytime I use them. So that's like my SOS product that I use instead of Vaseline or Aquaphor. Next up, I purchased the Estee Lauder Advanced Night Repair Overnight Treatment. I think I mentioned in a recent empties video that I was using their like rescue solution product that I I really enjoyed and, and kind of had it in my essence step. So instead of rebuying that one, I decided to try their new product, which is, I guess, like a bit of an overnight sleeping mask. I've used this maybe two to three times. It has a super silky texture that just glides on the skin like a hug. So it's a really nice feeling. Although I've only used it a handful of times, so I can't really speak about results, but, but I feel like the rescue solution was a little bit more like instantly hydrating and I noticed a bit more of a calming effect quite quickly. This I just kind of feel like it's a moisturizer, but I'll obviously need to use it more long term and then I'll update you when it becomes an empty as to how I go. But for my first impressions, I sort of suspect that I'll go back to the rescue solution rather than this new product. There's a dermatologist on Instagram that I follow, Dr. Ellen, um, who raves about AO2 Clear. So this isn't available in Australia as far as I know, but it's basically like oxygenated water or like it oxygenates your skin somehow. So I haven't even looked into it too much. Um, it's supposed to help diffuse redness and actually be antibacterial. So they make a lot of acne claims. Technically, a lot of the claims they make, um, I think fall into drug category and this is definitely not a drug product. So they probably shouldn't be saying a lot of the stuff they do say, but I was interested enough to try. Um, I've been using for about a week. So again, too early to mention results, but if this ends up working out well, it will be something that I'd be able to recommend for people that want to stay away from acids, for example, or maybe find benzoyl peroxide too drying. So it's literally just distilled water, billions of oxygen, no bubbles. I don't know. It sounds a bit like woo, but if a dermatologist is recommending it, I'm starting to take it a bit more seriously. So yeah, we'll see how we go. Next up is the new BHA toner from Dr. Dennis Gross. 
I've kind of steered away from using 2% salicylic acid because I rely on lotion P50 so much for my exfoliation that 2% can be a little bit strong. But this formula just sounded quite fascinating. The actual blend they've used and the amount of like anti-inflammatory ingredients they've included was super interesting to me. So I'm keen to try it. Um, I did open it just to test the texture because I don't like oily textures, but this feels quite watery. So I am actually quite keen to integrate it into my routine. And also from Dr. Dennis Gross, I picked up the new moisturizer, the Blur and Repair Cream. Um, they have like a Blur and Repair Serum that I really enjoy that has ectoin in it. The serum, I'm not sure that it agrees with my skin 100%. I just feel like I get a bit of flushing when I use it. So I'm in the process of removing it from my routine just to see how my skin reacts without it. But I bought the cream because I actually enjoyed the line and the ingredients they've used for dryness and dehydration. So just to see how I go and whether my skin just reacts nicer with the cream. The serum is really nice in terms of a texture though. So um, I'm kind of sad that it's maybe not agreeing with my skin. I'll have to update on that. But if, but if you want something super silky, super plumping, it's a great one to explore. And I hope this new cream is along those same lines. I also picked up the new Genifique Ultimate from Luncom. Um, this will be having a dedicated video and I think that video will probably be up before this one. So I'll link to that below. Um, basically Luncom have just updated their Genifique serum with a with a new bit of glucan extract and also licorice. So they've done a really nice job upgrading the serum, but I'll discuss this more in the dedicated Genifique video that um, you would have already seen. And I'm sorry if you see like random milk mustache appearing, I'm just drinking a coffee while I'm filming because I feel like I'll be here for a while. And don't forget to subscribe. I have quite a lot of people watch my videos but won't subscribe. And it's like, I know I have a fairly dry personality and it's maybe not one that you want to <laughs> interact with regularly, but I still think you should subscribe because it's the nice thing to do. Next up from Sulwasu, I purchased the Ultimate S Enriched Water. I normally use just the regular First Care Essence, but in this line, what, what did they call it? The Ultimate S, they've added like a berry extract that has um, a bunch of flavonoids that are really good for skin and I guess form a better antioxidant shield. So I was super curious to try this range. Um, obviously with antioxidants, it's probably something that you don't see directly on the skin, but just as a product for under sunscreen, like instead of, or as a booster to vitamin C, I thought would be a good idea. This has a pretty thick, you know, milky, almost emulsion-like texture, but it breaks to more of a watery feel on the skin. Now my only letdown or like comment is that with the new products from Sulwasu, it seems like they're targeting a lot of the Western market. So even like the fragrance of this is very generic and floral, whereas their other products are more like ginseng. So they have a more signature fragrance of Sulwasu. So I'm disappointed that maybe they're losing the character of the brand. And this is something that might make me stop purchasing from them. I don't need Sulwasu to be like everyone else. Their whole selling point is the ginseng story and the unique properties that that offers. So I just don't want them to lose their heritage to appeal to Western market. Um, so yeah, we'll see how they go. I actually hope sales go down so that it reflects that people considering Sulwasu is like a proper Korean brand. It's not one of the fake ones. It's not one of the fake ones made for the Western market. So yeah, that's a bit of a shame, but we'll see how we go. Next up, I picked up the new cream from Clinique, Smart Clinical Repair Overnight Recovery Cream. Honestly, I didn't really look too much into this. They just made like barrier repair claims. It sounded like it could be a good night cream and it does have a pretty thick sort of buttery texture. So I'm keen to use this and explore how it goes. Well, right now, my favorite sort of night cream is the Dr. Sam Bunting Flawless Intense. So anything that I use instead of that is competing against that product, but we'll see Clinique has probably lost a bit of relevance over the last few years. Um, I hope they can sort of reignite things and get things back on track because they have a lot of potential. From La Mer, I picked up the Deep Purifying Mask, which has a super intense green color, a lot like the shirt that I'm wearing, and it applies like a mud. Um, it does dry down, but not super tight, and then it actually rinses away really well. They also include like a sponge for removal and a blush for application, so it's a whole, so it's a whole vibe, you know, when you get this at home. Now, at the time of filming, this product has actually not been launched in Australia, which is a bit annoying because um, we're always so late. I ended up ordering it 
it from Selfridges because I was just tired of waiting. The few times I've used it so far, I very much enjoyed it. It has a purifying effect without feeling like it's sucking the life out of your skin. So I think they've designed it really nicely. Um, and I can see this being a popular one for the brand moving forward. And also from La Mer, I bought their new night cream, the rejuvenating night cream. So I think this is supposed to be like their plant alternative to retinol creams, which of course I don't believe in, but anytime La Mer launches a new extract, I'm all ears just cause I really enjoy their products generally. This texture isn't quite as moisturizing as their regular creme de la mer. So if you're dedicated to that, I think you'll be a little bit let down by this. Um, I would say though that this does have a more modern texture. So it has that kind of silky enveloping feel. Um, so it feels amazing. It's just not quite as moisturizing or it doesn't feel like it's like shielding the skin as much as the original La Mer did. So yeah, I've only, I've only really used it a couple times. Um, as you've sort of seen in this video, I bought a few night repair moisturizers like the Estee Lauder, the Clinique, the La Mer. I've opened all of them just to get a sense of their texture and to see which one I want to start with. But now I'm just going to focus on one for, you know, three to four weeks to get a real idea of how they work and then I'll move on to the next one and so I will of course update after I've trialed all of them to see where I landed but I kind of suspect I'm still going to prefer Dr. Sam's moisturizer but we'll see. Next is a SOS moisturizer from Tower 28. Um, there's no particular reason I purchased this just Tower 28 um, only just launched in Australia at Mecca so it's been a long time coming. Um, their spray hypochlorous spray is of course their flagship product but I feel like I'm just not sure about using those types of sprays regularly so I have a mini of it but I certainly don't use it regularly. I figured I'd try the moisturizer because again it sounds like it would be good to maintain barrier quality. Um, no real thoughts it sounds actually quite basic but the price point was decent so I thought it could be something I could have to suggest to people that are looking for a relatively affordable cream. Next up from Dior I picked up the updated formula of their Dream Skin Care and Perfect. I wasn't I'm not like loyal to this product at all I've tried a few samples here and there of the previous one but I felt like it was a little bit too fluid and also actually a little bit too glowy or it made my skin look a little bit like tin, which some people like that glow up effect, but I wasn't really a fan. This formula is a little bit thicker, so it feels like just more creamy really and a bit like a primer. And I find that the that it strikes a good balance between like pore filling and blurring while still giving a bit of a natural while still giving a bit of a natural glow to the skin. Uh, as you know, I prefer a matte finish, but I don't mind if like a little bit of a glow peeks through the matteness, you know, when the light hits, that sort of thing. So that's where I think these finishing serums are useful. I mentioned in a recent video that I really enjoyed the Biologique Silk Plus, um, and that's kind of a corresponding product to the Dior just Silk Plus is a bit more invisible on the skin and a little bit more like directly blurring without having too much of a pigment in it. Whereas Dior actually has noticeable pigment or like um, tone up quality to it. So yeah, I think if you if you just want blurring then the Biologique one will probably be better and it has like anti-pollution properties as well. Whereas the Dior one will have a bit of tone correction. So yeah, I have them both just to see how I go and probably use them situationally. Um, but I definitely like this new upgraded formula of the Dior product more than the previous one. Next up is the moisturizing mask from Caudalie. I haven't bought much Caudalie recently. Um, I still really enjoy their grape water in a can as like an easy burst of hydration, especially when applying a hydrating mask. Everything else from the line that I've tried is fine, but nothing has ever sort of stayed as a favorite. So I don't particularly seek out Caudalie. Um, this product I really just threw in my cart because Sephora was having like a 20% off sale and I thought it might be time to re-explore the brand. But yeah, no real thoughts. This just looked like an easy way to try the brand again. Next up, I like woke up one day and decided that I hadn't tried enough Clarins. So obviously Clarins has been around for a long time and there were periods years ago where I used Clarins exclusively for months at a time. And then my kind of, and then my interest in the brand kind of waned. Recently, it seems like they've been relaunching a lot of their products, improving their environmental footprint in regard to packaging and maybe also tweaking some of their formulations. So I picked up several Clarence products, no real rhyme or reason, just the products that sounded nice to me, I thought I'd try. 
most notably is that Clarence have relaunched their flagship serum, the Double Serum. So I think they're on their ninth generation of this now. I have used the previous formula and versions before that, and I never really clicked with it specifically. But again, I'm always keen to try upgrade because even with Genifique, you know, the previous formula was okay, but I feel like the new version is much better. So I'm hoping to see if I get along better with the updated version of the Clarence Serum 2. The main kind of point of difference and calling card of the upgrade is that they've added a new extract kind of inspired by science of epigenetics. Um, so that seems to be where a lot of brands are going in terms of marketing and inspiration for their antioxidant products. So yeah, um, I don't think most people will notice much functional change in using double serum like the new one versus old formulas. But again, you don't know until you try it. I also picked up one of their hydrating serums so this looked interesting hydro essential um bi serum they call it it is a biphase product so it has like a watery so it has a watery component and an oil component that you shake uh, on the skin it still feels really light and weightless so you're kind of getting the you so you're kind of getting like the emollients of an oil without it feeling quite so oily on the skin um so i really like the smell of this i find it quite hydrating um my initial impression is that it hasn't like blown me away, but I've only just started using it, so I'll need some more time. Now, I actually purchased these Clarence products before I knew Lancome were even relaunching Genifique, so I'm going to pause testing Clarence in favor of Lancome for now. So these are going in the shelf for a few weeks until I get through the first bottle of Genifique, and then I'll come back to them later. Also from Clarence, I picked up their cleansing oil. This I opened pretty much straight away and immediately decided I don't like it. Um, this will come up in a fails video shortly, but basically it just feels really slippy and silicone-y. Um, I don't like it at all, so that was an instant flop. A couple of other products I haven't opened yet. I got their purifying toning lotion and also their cleansing micellar water to try as well. Plus the description on the website for this um, revitalizing treatment essence sounded super interesting. They talk a lot about the sensorial properties. So I'm actually quite keen to open this and give it a go. Lastly, from Clarins, I picked up their Hydra Essential Mask, which I think is basically just a moisturizing mask. So honestly, there are just some days where I want to simplify my routine or I want a bit of like a pampering effect. So having a thick moisturizing mask is just something that I like to use more as a self-care thing. And lastly, for the skincare portion of this video, I picked up the new cleanser from Guerlain. It has these like little beads suspended in a gel. So it just looked super interesting to me um, and I'm keen to see how it goes. Moving on to lip treatments and for some reason I really enjoy trying lip care. Not like coloured lip products but just anything to help with lip dryness. I don't experience like an abundance of lip dryness issues but there's just something about like again the ritual of applying a lip treatment at night that I really enjoy. Having said that one of the brands that I picked up, um, Phytosurgeons, their balm is designed more for a kind of low sheen matte look with a really long term moisturising effect that I absolutely love during the day. So that's what that looks like. They have released this in like color versions as well. Some of them I think even look like Black Honey from Clinique. Um, the one I picked up is just their clear because I just wanted it as a balm effect, but I absolutely love this and I think it's a super unique product in the market. A lot of balms are super glossy and then they kind of rub, off, rub away and I don't feel like they've actually nurtured my lips properly. This isn't super glossy. It's almost invisible on the lips unless you like apply a lot so you can build it up if you want to but generally it just lasts for hours and I think it properly like moisturizes and nourishes my lips. So I've absolutely loved having this. Next, I picked up the Prada lip that has gone a bit viral on social media, I think thanks to Sabrina Carpenter. The packaging is really quite cool. I didn't, I didn't get the tinted one again. I just got the like clear balm. And this, I don't think Prada Beauty is available in Australia. So I picked this up at Selfridges as well. Um, to be honest, I don't really understand the hype. So I have used this for a few weeks. Um, it just feels like a standard chapstick. And the way they designed the fragrance is super strange. Like it lingers and I can taste it. It goes up my nostrils and it's just an unpleasant fragrance experience. It's not that the fragrance is bad. It's just a quite generic kind of luxury floral smell. Um, it's just the way that it lingers. It's like it won't dissipate. I actually enjoy having fragrance in product, 
but I want it designed in a way that, you know, if I'm applying it close to my nose or it's a leave-on product, that, that fragrance should dissipate after a little while. But this I find to be super clingy, but I don't find the actual product to be that moisturizing. So yeah, I don't really get it personally, um, unless you like a color or you like, the, or you like the pH effect of it changing on your lips with some of the other shades. Um, yeah, I think really just a bit of a gimmick with nice packaging. I also picked up the new lip treatment from uh, Tatcha because I really enjoyed the Kiss You in the Pot. That's what that one looks like. This is pointless, like I don't, I don't like it. It gives my lips a really weird milky look to them. It does not work anywhere near as well as the Kiss You from like a functional moisturizing perspective. So pointless, regret buying it, do not recommend. I know this video is supposed to be more of a haul because I've opened some of these videos waiting for other products to arrive. I've already had a chance to use some products and yeah, the lip category was a bit of a dud overall except for the phytosurgeons. Oh, having said that though, I did find one luxury favorite that I do enjoy. Uh, that's the Shantikaya lip treatment. I think it's their Rose de May um, lip. I forgot. Yeah, their Rose de May lip balm. This actually looks quite pink in the tube and I was worried it would like leave an actual color or stain, which I don't want at night or during the day. Um, but the texture of this is actually quite unique. So I was really happy with that because if you're going to be a luxury brand, my minimum expectation is that you're putting in some development in, cre in creating textures that are interesting and this lip product from Shantakai applies so nicely it makes my it makes my lips almost feel wet so that's an unusual sensation because it's like balmy but not oily it is actually like a wet feeling so it's quite enjoyable just as a point of difference and I think this works quite well at hydrating as well so if you're looking for a slightly more affordable lip if you prefer a low sheen then phytosurgence is great if you do prefer a glowy lip though then the Shantakai is the way to go Next up are a few hair care products and they're all from Sacred. So I picked up a backup of their Clarifying Scalp Scrub Shampoo. I absolutely love this product. It takes all the build up out of my hair and it has this sort of minty sweet freshness that I really enjoy. I also picked up a backup of their Hydrating Shampoo. The scent of this one is more ambery and kind of reminds me of honey without smelling like honey directly. With the two products I've just mentioned, I already have them in my shower and I love using them. So these are backups. The hydrating shampoo is probably better for like more dry, for more dry hair types. I think you might find that if you have thin hair that it might weigh it down. So I'm interested to see when Sacred will come out um, with products targeting more like oily hair or thinner hair. But the scalp scrub would be fine for everyone. And lastly from Sacred, I picked up their new hydrating conditioner. So I believe this was supposed to launch when the brand came out earlier this year, but it was delayed because they had it as a coming soon on their website for a while and it's finally here um, it just matches the shampoo as a hydrating conditioner so I imagine this will feel quite rich I haven't opened this though um, but that's you can see on the packaging it has this cool effect and embossing in it so um, I just really love the vibe of sacred and yes it is a celebrity brand I love Beyonce, but I think genuinely her and her team have done an awesome job designing these products. And the second to last category for today's haul is body. I picked up the new Butter Drop from Fenty Skin. This is really nice packaging. Like I love the pump. This is like a frosted glass, so it feels quite weighted and luxurious. I'm not like crazy about the scent. It's fine. It just sort of smells fresh. Um, but I'm keen to see how the actual lotion itself performs. I also picked up the new clarifying body spray from Murad. It just seems to have a regular spray mechanism. This I haven't opened yet. We're heading into spring summer in Australia, so I thought I would just get ahead of it. Um, so yeah, I haven't even tried this, no real thoughts, just that um, it's something that I intend on using over the coming months. And by extension, and as a compliment to that, I also picked up the matching kind of Murad body pads. So these are just like a single use pad that I guess you run over certain areas. Um, to be honest, I don't really know why I bought this. I don't love single use products like this, but um, I just thought I should try it in the system with the pads and the spray to get the overall effect of the products and then decide which one I like best. From Glossier, I picked up their new 
their new you body cream. I love this little detail on the on the lid, on the cap. That's quite sweet. And this packaging feels really weighted and heavy. And the texture of it looks quite amazing and like really buttery and whipped. So I'm super keen to try. I've never actually smelt you from Glossier before, but if it smells like it does in here, I can see why it's popular. I definitely prefer the scent of this over the Fenty. So, so I can see myself reaching for the Glossier product for sure. And I also picked up a bunch of products from Bioma. They recently launched a whole collection of body products. This is all from Space and K. I haven't opened any of them, so I have no thoughts at all, but I'll just run through what I picked up. So I got their hydrating body wash. I got the matching hydrating body lotion. I also picked up the brightening body wash, the smoothing body polish, and the smoothing body serum. So again, I have no thoughts on those, just wanted to show you and I will update with probably a dedicated video on the Bioma range after I've been through a few of them. And the last category in today's haul is fragrance and there's a lot of Chanel. I just ended up at the Chanel store or Chanel counter and went a little bit nuts. It all started with their new release, the Allure Home Sport Super Leggera, which is Chanel's first new fragrance in like more than men's collection in six years, I think. So it's been ages and I was super excited. I was a bit disappointed to find that it was a flanker of the Allure Home Sport range because I actually don't like Allure Home Sport or Allure Home Sport Extreme. They, they, they smell very aquatic, which is an ozonic and they're kind of no that I don't really enjoy in fragrance. Sadly, sadly, this one very much has that same DNA. Luckily, it is a bit fresher and I kind of pick up more on the citrus notes where it, it leans a bit more like, like a cologne. So with the Laguerra, with the Super Laguerra, I can get away with wearing it without being bothered. I wouldn't say it's the type of fragrance that I love. And honestly, I purchased it more for collector's reasons because I believe it's limited edition. And I just wanted to have it as a reference for this release. Now, the next three fragrances I have already owned in the past. So they're just basically repurchasing because I'd emptied them. Most of them I haven't had in my collection for years, you know, maybe five, 10 years, if not longer. I'm not really sure on the timeline, but I picked up the classic Allure Homme. So this is um, really what started the whole range. And I think this product is maybe from like 90s, even 1995 thereabouts with both the Super Leggera, Super Leggera, however you say it, and also the original Allure Homme. I would say these are quite traditional masculine leaning fragrances that I would consider to be office appropriate. And that's kind of why I bought them is because the fragrances that I personally enjoy, they either lean very gourmand, so they have a kind of food quality to them, or they're super citrus where they sometimes feel like a cleaning product. And although I love those fragrances, I suspect that the projection of them to other people maybe isn't the most desirable. So if I know that I'm in a professional setting around people that I don't know very well, then I'd like to have a few fragrances in my collection that are just like generic. Not to say Allure Homme is generic. I would say the Super Leggera is more generic than this. I still quite enjoy this fragrance. This has a little bit of a woody, like a woodsy quality, but still has a freshness to it. And I think it's really well designed. It's just that I think a lot of other brands have probably copied it over the years. So it's a more familiar scent. So yeah, the Super Leggera, I would highly suggest actually going into store and s smelling. Um, probably better suited to people if you do like if you do like fragrances that have an aquatic vibe to them. Whereas Allure Home, I think, would be a pretty safe blind buy across the board because I don't really pick up on any particular notes. It just smells like a masculine leaning cologne. And when I and when I use the phrase like masculine leaning, I mean in the sense of the categorization of the products. I totally believe all fragrances are unisex. So that's I'm just saying this for like explanation purposes as to how they sit in the market. Now, also from Chanel, I picked up the Allure, the Allure Home Edition Blanc, which is, I guess, the white edition. Um, this smells entirely different to the others in the line, and I absolutely love this. To me, it's a masterpiece. Um, I recently finished a bottle last year, so I was without it for about six months or so, but then I decided that I miss it. So I feel like I will have this in my collection moving forward forever. This smells a bit like a bright lemon meringue pie. So there's there's a little bit of like a musky creamy quality to it, but it also smells really vibrant and fresh. So no notes, perfect. If you love like lemon citrus scents, this fragrance is amazing.
And lastly from Chanel, I picked up the Allure Home Sport Cologne. Um, although this is within the sport line and, and all of the other Allure Home Sport scents to me have an aquatic note, this one doesn't. This just smells like citrus notes to me, so I'm really happy about that and will definitely be my favourite from the Allure Home Sport line. In some ways, the DNA of this cologne is more similar to the um, Edition Blanc that I just showed. Um, it's just that the cologne version is more but the cologne has more of like a brightness and a sharpness to it um, I don't want to compare it to vinegar but it's like a sweet smelling lemon vinegar that's like a true cologne in my opinion but there's a lot of longevity out of this so I find a lot of colognes I apply them they're gone within like 20 minutes this lasts all day I can still smell it on myself like seven or eight hours later if you ever smelt the Dior home cologne it's like a white and blue bottle they have similar vibes not exactly the same but i find the dior just dissipates so i won't buy that again but this chanel one it just lasts and lasts so this one and this one are both citrus forward scents in the truest sense of the word but this one here has more of like a creamy sweetness to it and this one here just has a sharpness brightness to it so i love them both but if I had to pick, I would go this one. It's just a more refined, elegant scent. This is just more of like a general kind of aftershave leaning type fragrance. Beautiful still. While I was at Chanel, um, Tom Ford is sort of, the Tom Ford counter is like right next door. So I also noticed they were promoting their new um, Eau de Ombre leather, <laughs> excuse my pronunciation. So I tried a little sample and it was like appealing to me in store, but I thought instead of blind buying a full bottle, they had these minis available. Um, this scent is really interesting because it's like obviously leather inspired, but the leather note is not super apparent. So this leans a little bit more like vanilla with like a hint of leather in the background. I think a really like deep scent that is probably more appropriate for nighttime, but you could get away with it maybe in the day in like fall winter season. I find this a little bit strong. So although it's lighter than the other leather fragrances from Tom Ford, it's not one that I can get away with on like a day-to-day -day use. I just don't want to be that over overpowering when I'm around people in like an office environment. Yeah. I don't think this has actual coconut in the notes, but for some reason I get a little bit of like that creamy coconutty vibe from it. Um, so it's not tropical by any means, but just that creaminess of coconut is what comes through. For some reason I don't really enjoy like creamy coconut notes over a long term. So it's something that I'll use one day and then I'll pick it up again in a few weeks. So it's a nice scent, I'm just not obsessed with it. I'm actually keen to try black lacquer which hadn't come out yet, but I'm hoping that will be out in a few weeks. So I'll be able to go um, have a look at that in store. I don't know if that, I, I, like I'm so bad at explaining fragrances. So I don't know if any of this has been helpful, but um, if you have any specific questions, I'll try to get back to you in a more coherent way in the comment. And before I move on to the last thing, um, I have a couple of fragrances on my wish list still. Fendi have recently launched a whole collection. So I'm keen to try that and maybe find one to pick out. I feel like I'm missing a Diptyque fragrance from my collection. I would like to add a Lalabo, which I also don't have. Recently, Dries launched at Mecca and they have a wide range of products with really nice bottles so I'm keen to explore that and I also probably number one on my list is Louis Vuitton Imagination I think it's called I'll see because all of these fragrances are super pricey like fragrance prices are getting ridiculous um, so I don't know where I'll end up I'll just see what I like the best but those are a few that are on my wish list that I'm kind of hovering around. now lastly for this haul and the last product is another fragrance it's actually another one that I picked up on the day I bought all the Chanel fragrances I was just possessed that day but it's the one from Guerlain I think it's their classic or like the original La Homme La Homme ideal um, however you say it I don't own any fragrances from Guerlain which is a shame because they're known to be a fragrance house and I really want to start exploring them this was just really pleasant so it does have a bit of an old school vibe to it and but it has this really like interesting almond dna that i found super unique so i love this 
I would compare it more to like the Chanel Allure Homme. Not that they smell the same, but they kind of have the same vibe where I could use them as a multi-purpose, like daily at the office, like, you know, shouldn't be too offensive kind of scent. But because of the almond fragrance in this that I find super unique, it's that little bit more interesting and it prevents it from being too generic. So I'm really happy with this fragrance. I absolutely love it. And yeah, if you haven't smelled this one, it's probably worth a shot just if you do like almond, a little little bit marzipan like um, in the sense that's it for this haul video thank you for watching if you were able to sit through the whole thing and again do let me know if you have any questions in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can I'll see you in the next video